Donc nous sommes ici en Californie, chez Nive, parce que c'est une société en fait qui est une société sœur de, de Nive où la, le modèle Custom 75 série est construit dans ce petit atelier où vous allez voir plusieurs consoles en train d'être faites pour des euros propriétaires. Pourquoi Custom 75 Series Parce que c'est une console qui a été designée avec les schémas du préampli 1073, l'EQ 1081, le compresseur 2254, qui sont tous des années 70. Le préampli, l'EQ 4 bandes paramétriques, euh, le 1081 permet de choisir entre 5 sélections de fréquences, contrairement au 1073 classique qui n'a qu'une seule fréquence à 10 kHz que vous pouvez retrouver sur les consoles Nive actuelles, le modèle concurrent. Vous avez trois départs aux mono et un départ aux stéréo, ça vous en fait cinq. Vous avez huit sous-groupes, vous pouvez donc assigner n'importe lequel des 24, 36, 48, 64 canaux à vos sous-groupes si vous le souhaitez non seulement pour grouper des instruments de la même famille ensemble, mais aussi si vous avez tendance, comme moi, à vouloir mettre en avant le grain du son niveau. Vous allez donc charger du niveau en montant le niveau de votre préampli 1073. Et si vous risquez d'avoir trop de niveaux de sortie dans votre sortie directe, vous pouvez router vers le sous-groupe qui, lui, va l'atténuer et qui ne perdra aucune qualité puisqu'il est aussi sur transfo. Euh, tous les étages de cette console sont sur Transfo. Vous avez deux sorties master parallèles. Vous avez une sortie master dite moderne, qui pourrait être comparable à celle d'une SSL 9000, et la sortie master dite vintage, avec du caractère, c'est-à-dire avec des Transfo qui vont épaissir le son, l'élargir, et ce sera votre ingénieur de mastering qui choisira quelle version il préférera. All right, so this is a, a, um, a CS75. It's inbuilt for customer right now. We make everything here. Uh, we assemble the boards. Uh, we assemble the frames. We do the wood and the, and the leather and the bolsters. It's all done here in-house. Um, there's usually a large team of people, but I've got them all sort of off doing other things today because we do a lot of other things, including studio installs. Um, we think it's important to be part of the community, so we're actually inside the community rather than being a manufacturer trying to impose something. So in this facility, we will build these from the frame up um, and then start assembling boards. They all get tested. We have test jigs all over the factory here for various different pieces. Then when we assemble them, um, put them together and wire them. Um, and then we just finish them off with the metal and then the wood, which is hand polished in here. Um, we tend to look at the desks as being specific to a customer. Um, so the desk needs to reflect what the user is going to use because he has to sit in front of this desk every morning. So every morning he should think, I made a really nice decision. This is a nice piece of furniture and I feel good about it. On the inputs, you've got a phase switch on each input, phantom power, of course. You can switch the inputs. But right now it's on mic, that's the DI input, that's the door input, and that's the line input when it's not lit. So right now everybody's more or less on line. Sorry, on mic. Uh, you've got mic gains, which will gain them both the mic or the DI, depending on which one you're using. And then this is line trims, plus and minus. One of the decisions that they made early on was not to put any dynamics on the channel. Uh, there are two channels of real 2254s in the center, which can be assigned to the mix or can be patched anywhere else. The thing is, in a modern studio, people have all kinds of dynamics, all kinds of different tastes. The tastes are individual to each user. So rather than bogging the console down with those dynamics, which were you know, really something always different, Then we've got plenty of sends. That's what you've got all the aux sends and the inserts on every channel. I mentioned this briefly, is this is a pair of 2254s. Now, let me just talk about this. When we talk about the Neve numbers of uh, design, 1073, 1081, 1272, uh, 2254s, 
We're not talking about clones. We're not talking about knockoffs or, or uh, if you like, pastiches or, or even tribute parts. We're talking about things that are based upon the original designs using the original parts and the things that made them what they are. 2254s, which is a match diode compressor, uh, is the exact right parts with the exact right pieces on it. The 1073s, that's a 1073 all day long. It's a 1081 EQ all day long, although the two of the EQ paths are slightly different in terms of uh, the cutoff channels, um, just to make them a little bit more uh, wide. And the 1272 outputs, which is the big Carnhill transformers all the way across, exactly what we talk about. Now, uh, those are assignable to the mix, uh, the main mix path. They can be linked so you know, as a stereo pair, or they can be used as two individual monos. They're also available to the patch bay um, and on the back panel on a, on a DV25. So you can put them any way you like. Uh, the other thing we should mention while we're on this side, this is four stereo reverb returns, another set of eight inputs if you like. Uh, this is your AUX buses, this is in and outs of your um, AUXs. There's a built-in um, oscillator of course, and a full SLS system, stereo, a studio loudspeaker system with SENS. So again, you've got a comprehensive, if you like, grown-up professional monitor section. You'll see that there's a pair of stereo faders. This is your master fader. This is your monitor path fader. You can, of course, swap uh, monitor to main and main to monitor paths. So you can, you can also sum them and add them back in again, which is you know, very useful. Again, that means I've got, instead of just the 24 channels here, I've actually got 48 if I add in the monitor path as well. Uh, one of the nice things is you can sum all of the buses in the monitoring and most of the buses into the mix. So uh, your main, this part here is your main monitor section. Um, I can sum the retro buses and the modern buses together. I can sum all the AUX sends in here. I can sum the monitor bus in. I can also sum in the external two tracks. There's two two track inputs. There's also right here an iPod input, um, which is really nice. That's a properly balanced buffered three and a half millimeter stereo mini jack. So you can plug uh, your iPhone straight in for scratch track. That's also assignable to the talkback and the headphones. One of the lovely things about this console is there are two independent headphone amplifiers that are independently addressable, plus a third one for the control room, all of which can be assigned. There's also a talkback built in, so it's a microphone, uh, a talk, a push to talk, and all the sorts of things normally. So if you don't have a, a hearing a headphone system, that's already built in, and that can power multiple sets of headphones, both balanced and unbalanced headphones. On the recallables, um, I can save a setup. So if I turn the EQs, the insert pass, the IQs on, let's say all of the various different pieces, the low, the low shelves, for instance, um, I can have the uh, monitor path set to line, uh, I'm retros on. I can save that. So I'll just do store, I'll give it number seven. I've saved that as setup seven. Turn it off. If I do a recall of seven, on they come. So you do have different solo modes. You have uh, solo isolates, solo in place, solo in front. Uh, you've got the full AFL and PFL selections as well. Um, each channel has uh, four inputs, has a mic, a DI, a line input, and a DAW return. Um, that's pretty cool. The, all four of those are available to the main channel. In addition, the DAW and line are available to the monitor path. Now, the nice thing about it being an online console, of course, is that means you can actually have two channel, two signals or sources uh, live on a channel at the same time. Um, so that doubles up the numbers of inputs you have available. Um, now, the other thing there is uh, on each channel, you've got three mono aux sends and two stereo aux sends as well. So you've got lots of sends in the place. Uh, there's eight groups, that's eight buses across the console, which can all be put together and I'll go through the busing in a second. But the main thing to stress is there are two stereo buses. There's what we call a retro stereo bus and a modern stereo bus. The retro stereo bus is a traditional class A voltage summing bus fully transformed exactly as an early need would have been. 
again using the proper Carnhill transformers. I'll show you those in a second. Um, but that's the thing that gives you that lovely, warm, robust tone. Um, also, there's a direct out on every channel, which is what you'd send to your DAW. That's also always Class A as well. Then there's a modern bus. The modern stereo bus is very similar to a normal transformerless bus. And in design ethos um, and quality and attack is somewhat similar to that you'd find in a modern SSL, like a J, a 9000J. Very similar, in fact. Um, so that allows you to have the warmth and the tone and the, the push and the punch that you'd associate with the classic voltage summing bus. Uh, but when you bring things back in for a mix, you don't have to keep adding that in. You can have the clean summing bus, so you've got the variety of choice. You can also select whether you're on the retro or the modern on a channel by channel basis or across the whole board, which is really very interesting. It, it, it gives you a, a nice feel. So this is one of our channels. This is a channel that's in build, obviously. You can see it's already got its face plate on. Uh, the heart of it is this transformer. That is the green Carnhill St. Eyes winding. So that's your mic input, mic pre. That's the golden transformer. The St. Ives winding on the right machines from Carnhill, who are a wonderful company. Um, also on here, you'll see that we also have Carnhill inductors there, which are, again, that's for the line and the door and for the EQs. So again, all Carnhill, all the way through. You'll notice there's quite a lot of SMT, but that's mostly in your transformerless path or just in switching. All the switching's done on these relays. These are high quality uh, audio relays. And then wherever anything gets touched in the audio, it goes through the big old proper capacitors all the way through. Our main ethic inside this factory is this absolute beautiful audio quality. It's that tone. Now we don't profess to be the world's best ears or the world's best taste. So it's up to our clients to tell us. Um, our clients tell us it's the best sounding desk they've ever heard. Even people who've owned classic Neves uh, original proper Neves. You know, and they brought our desk because they wanted to get back to that place and they wish they had never sold their old Neve, uh, even though they were, you know, they sold them at the time because it was such a nightmare keeping them going. So when they found ours, they were overjoyed. And once they got them, they've even more overjoyed.